Ladies and gentlemen, we have gathered here today to go over Records of Ragnarok Chapter 95 featuring the end of Round 10, Okita vs Susano. You will be spoiled for this chapter and before we get into that, let's do a quick recap of the previous double chapter. If you want to skip the recap, then jump to this time on the screen or click the time code in the description. Last month's chapter started us off with both fighters bracing for yet another clash. Okita thanks his blade, revealing to be the sixth Valkyrie named Skalmud. Brunhilde senses that this will be Okita's final battle as a swordsman. Skalmud's power, Age of Sword, is preventing Okita's body from breaking under the strain of Onigo's demonic power. Additionally, channeling Okita's full potential, past, present, and even his untapped future skills into this very moment, granting Okita the perfect swordsman body. With his body in peak form, Okita moves with newfound speed, beginning his assault with a demon claw thrust. Susanoo deflects it with his Shinra Yayorozu and attempts to counter, but Okita evades and revs up another attack from behind. Susanoo slashes behind him, misses, and blocks another attack coming from Okita. Not stopping, Okita goes for one attack after the other. Susano notes that this is too fast as he can't counterattack or escape. Okita unleashes an unbroken barrage of strikes while Susano continuously keeps up. Zeus praises such movements that exceed human limits and Hermes note that they are both evolving at a rapid rate with Okita in the lead. Okita's squad is amazed at his skills and Kondo elaborates that those moves are from the dojo and are meant to kill in one hit. Unleashing multiple at once should be impossible for Akita. Only one person in the audience knew the answer to this and his name was Ichimatsu. Despite being bedridden, Okita had poured all of his energy into refining his swordsmanship, developing over 80 techniques that could combo off each other, creating a new martial arts style. Comboing these techniques permitted Okita to transcend human logic and soar into the heavens. Okita leaps into the air and unleashes a powerful new move called Tenen Rishin Ryu Empyrean, which manifests as a falcon shaped aura. After Susano blocks it, Kondo explains that this move symbolizes a state of being able to freely enjoy oneself naturally that originated from Kondo's foster father. Okita is now in a state where no one has ever been and unleashes another barrage of techniques. Despite feeling crushed, Susuno admires Okita's skill and slashes around himself. Okita dodges and replies by thanking Susuno for helping him achieve his peak while setting up for a three stage thrust. Except Kondo noticed something different this time. The first strike is deflected and the second is blocked, but Okita's nimble maneuvering lets him get behind Susano, setting up for a final full power demon claw thrust. Susano still blocks it, but is pushed back with his divine weapon cracking. Susano attempts to deflect the thrust power, but it's too late when it's shown that both him and his weapon was pierced, causing his weapon to break and leaving Susano badly injured. The audience is shocked while also expecting Okita's victory. However, Okita himself felt uneasy. Susano acknowledges how serious this battle is and recognizes what true swordsmanship is. He thanks Okita again, raises his hand in the air, and puts them together as if he's wielding the hilt of his sword. Next, he assumes a stance, putting Okita on alert, and quickly swings an invisible sword. Okita initially believed he dodged but slashes appear on his left side and he realized that his bones were actually cut. Susano comments he's reached a peak with his invisible sword Musoken. With the battle rapidly coming to an end and both fighters at their peak, the important question remains. Will the humans win and tie with the gods once again? Or will the gods be another step closer to humanity's erasure? Whoa, 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 whoa. You made it this far into the video?
Clearly you're enjoying the content I'm putting out. So let's make an awesome trade deal. You either subscribe or like the video and I'll continue to improve and consistently push out fire videos. I don't know. Sounds like a win-win to me. It's like the best trade deal in history. How could you deny this? This new month's chapter opens up explaining that there is a dream that martial arts masters seek to fulfill. For example, at the peak of archery, one doesn't require an arrow to shoot. The peak of fist fighting, one doesn't need to strike with their fists. And finally, the peak of swordsmanship, where one doesn't need a sword to cut. Highlighting the dream to kill without a weapon. It's hypothesized if such a dream is out of reach, but we are proven wrong and shown an old swordsman swinging down at a boulder as if he had a blade. After some time, the boulder was sliced in half, but unfortunately, the old man's heart collapsed on him and he falls to the ground dead. Susano, in his crow form, witnesses this achievement. The narration explains that there were masters who did reach that peak status, but would die that same moment they achieved that peak because the power was so great that their body was destroyed due to going beyond the limits of humanity and reaching the realm of gods. We dash back to the match where Hemdal announces that Susano's last attack destroyed Okita's left side. Susano is impressed with his invisible sword despite the attack itself causing his own body to crack. Okita himself is also impressed that Susano is able to evolve further no matter how much Okita thinks he surpassed him. Even with this desperate situation, both fighters express how much fun they're having with this battle and Susano once again wishes the battle could go on longer but realizes that if he continues to use this blade, his body and soul will shatter. He raises his blade again and is ready to finish things. Okita agrees and makes his final stand as well. Ares is confused at Susano's Musoken, aka his invisible sword, and Hermes too is baffled. He speculates that it's truly a blade of nothingness, a sword that cannot be seen, leaving Ares still confused on how such a technique and blade can even exist. Zeus concludes that such a power cannot be measured since it transcends the realm of reason. The only thing that is certain is that after countless years of swinging the blade, Susano has truly reached the pinnacle of swordsmanship into the realm of supreme gods. All of Okita's squad mates feel a sense of anxiety for Okita's situation to the point where one of them sees how exhausted he is and begins to lose faith in Okita. Kondo tells him to pay attention and watch but is met with further pushback as his squad mate can't bear to watch Okita suffer anymore. Kondo still wants to watch everything to the very end because he knows that Okita wanted this type of battle, a battle where he can go all out as a samurai. Both Okita and Susano express their happiness to have met such a worthy opponent, each taking a stance while the audience holds its breath. Susano was the first to assume a sword stance that was a one hit kill and shortly afterwards Okita prepares himself. Susano swings down launching another invisible slash. Okita braces himself and takes a brutal cut across the chest, coughing blood and starts collapsing, with Susano's body coming even closer to shadowing. As Okita falls, he thinks himself how strong Susano is and how he gave everything he had. He can no longer move and is willing to let himself die right now as a samurai. Before that, Kondo and all his squad mates call out to him and he awakens with a determination to still fly. While reminiscing on his life, he stands again and leaps towards Susano with his final blow. Susano is in awe that Okita is still able to fight but knows that Okita can no longer reach him and preps one last slash, stating that this is the end. Yet to his shock, Okita's aura flares to life once more and he unleashes his ultimate technique, Tenchu or Flight to the Heavens 3 Stage Thrust, whichever you prefer. All three blows 
land and Susumu's body is filled with holes. Okita falls to the ground, leaving the audience speechless. Susumu is amazed that Okita continued to soar despite not being able to fly and what makes it better is he achieved it even with his body in its critical state, earning Susanoo's utmost admiration and respect. Susanoo goes in for his last attack as Okita lays helpless on the ground when suddenly Susanoo's arms stop and his arms shatter, signifying his defeat. Susanoo sees he can no longer swing his sword and feels a bit of loneliness as his body continues to shatter away, leaving his family devastated. Before he goes, Okita delivers one last thank you to Susano as a sign of deep respect for the battle they shared, followed by Hemdal announcing the conclusion of round 10 being Okita Soji as the winner, bringing this month's chapter to a bittersweet ending. Well folks, we finally reached the end of round 10 and let me say that I'm very happy Okita won. Y'all know me, since the beginning I was on Team Okita, however at the same time seeing Susano state that it'll be lonely just broke my heart a bit. To be honest, the dude grew on me a lot and has become my favorite god so it was sad to see him go. At the very least, he died with a smile and was able to have the fight of his life. I can't wait to do a deep analysis of this fight too. I plan to do all of them in order and I already have round 1 out. So consider subscribing to get notified for when the round 10 analysis is released. Overall, I'm happy we got to see two fighters finally put all their skills and techniques to use against the perfect opponent. Both evolved into the highest realm of their swordsmanship and by virtue transcended logic. Despite the hardships they both faced, they never gave up on swordsmanship and for that, their efforts were rewarded by fighting each other to their heart's content. You know, I'm really surprised that the cost of Musoken is so high. Humans couldn't use this more than once without insta dying, and even with Susano, he was only able to do it twice before shattering. Theoretically, he could have done one more if Okita didn't three stage thrust him, but after that third strike, he's probably cooked. Speaking of cost, I wonder if it's gonna cost Okita his life or his fighting skills for pulling off all those combos. His Onigo did say they would die, so I'm curious to see what happens. Hopefully it's just Okita is now forever handicapped. His demon form and combos is the best thing I've seen in all of the manga. Listen, I know the Okita glaze is heavy, but come on, put a little respect on my boy's name. I really thought Okita was cooked upon the second slash and he was falling, which I should clarify, I love Okita, but that slash should have killed him low key. Like this thing sliced your bones and then went across your chest. Your heart and lungs should be killed instantly. But that family plot armor kicked in. Where was this for my boy Adam? Also surprised Okita was able to leap and get that attack off with half his body unusable. Like I had the same thought as Susano and was like, bro, you can still wield your sword? The fake out was another cool way to catch Susano off guard at the right moment and seeing him riddled with holes was also pretty gnarly. By the way, do y'all realize how long this round went on for? Bro, the chapter that introduced them onto the arena was a whopping 10 months ago at the beginning of the year. Basically, it took a whole year for this fight to finish with 9 whole chapters. That's kinda insane. The journey though was fun. We also did have that Odin, Buddha, Beelzebub interruption that lasted some time, so that partially explains the timeline. Lastly, I enjoyed watching these two enjoy each other's company and complimenting each other throughout the fight. And with that being said, let's take a moment to pay our respects to the goat sword god Susano Mikoto. You were an amazing fighter to watch. May your soul rest in peace. Well, that's all I have for today. If you enjoyed my reviews for this round, 
then you should definitely go check out my live reactions to the chapters of this round. There you get the raw uncut version of me that has more of my personality showing. If that interests you, then you can click on the box at the top right to check out the live reactions for this chapter, or you can click the playlist box on the screen to see any other reactions that might interest you. Finally, I'll let y'all go. Thanks once again for taking the time to watch the video. Love the support as always. Stay safe out there, fellas, and be good people. Catch y'all later. Peace.